Good afternoon, welcome to Manikai. We will start discussing current affairs of 12 April. <coughs> First is on Finland's join to NATO. Recently, Finland has finally become the first 31st country to join the North Atlantic Organization after applying in May 2022. NATO was established in 1949. Earlier it has 30 members. Now 31 members will be the East Finland. It has applied last year, May 2022. <coughs> Why such type of development are provocative? See, by various agreements, the US and Russia, they have come into an agreement that NATO will not expand. <coughs> because expansion of NATO is is a symbol of symbol of threat to the security of Russia. That's why right. The Finnish president that's why Russia, obviously Russia will respond to it. So it is an undesirable thing for Russia. The Finnish president Sauli, uh, Sauli Ninisto marked that the event by starting that the era of military non-alignment in our history has come to an end. Military non-alignment in our history has come to an end, right? NATO based on the principle of collective security. What is the party mean by collective security? Collective security means to ensure your it is a huge number of groups they will come together right and they will sign collective security it means that if any one country is attacked if any country attack one country of these members then it will be deemed as all members are attacked suppose as Finland joined NATO and tomorrow somebody will attack Finland then every all the country, 30 countries of NATO will fight against that particular country. That is how you can ensure collective security. The move to join the security alliance was precipitated, precipitated by Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022. As Ukraine started to um, plan to join the NATO, then Russia has affected, uh, attacked it and the war is continuing. Finland's historical experience with Russia and the changing nature of international geopolitics with a decline in Russian influence. What has been Russia's response? The Russian spokesperson, that is Dmitry Peskov, responded to the Finland joining NATO as naturally this force this forces us to take countermeasures to ensure our own tactical and strategic security. Russia thinks thinks it is a, it is a threat. It is a threat to security of Russia. The Russian Foreign Ministry said that while it will respond with military technical measures, military technical measures, the specifics of its actions will depend on own on the terms under which Finland joins NATO. So the Russian Foreign Ministry said that it will respond. It is a military technical measures and after observing the specifics in which uh, the NATO has joined, it can show its response. That will depend because sometimes if um, there are various there are various specifics, right? The specifics of its action will depend on terms on, on the which terms it has joined NATO. That depends the threat on Russia. The ministry deemed the now defunct policy of non-alignment as a wise decision and said that Finland has now lost its independence. Right? Russia said that Finland has now, now lost its independence because they have to obey. So far as military decision is concerned, so far as strategy decision is concerned, they have to they have to go through. They have they have lost their independence. They are no more politically non-aligned. It made clear you know, in no ambiguous terms that this decision will have a negative effect on the bilateral relations between Russia and Finland. 
this decision will have a negative effect on the relations between russia and finland before the first soviet finnish war russia sought to establish buffer zone so along its western border it means to protecting itself because of its history being invaded by foreign powers from finland various foreign powers has invaded russia through finland so russia wanted to protect its foreign uh, its western side okay lingering tensions from russia revolution and finnish war civil war between 1917 and 1918 as well as unresolved issues from the treaty of dog part in 1920 were responsible for the first soviet finnish war the second soviet finnish war in which which took place between 1941 and 1944 ended with defeat of finland so finland got defeated it is the history with finland this is russian history with finland finland lost the territories to soviet union and had to pay for war reparations this coupled with the independence uh, independence process of 1917 civil war between civil war between 1918 1919 the lapland war in 1944 impacted the collective psyche of the finlands this made finland pursue pragmatic security right so by multiple wars finland was intervened by uh, finland uh, through finland various countries invaded the russia so russia is insecure about its western border and also there is multiple times war between soviet and the finland so finland is also insecure about its own security that's why it has developed or uh, chose collective security that is that why it has joined not to press conference complete security so it is it says that it is a pragmatic security policy finland think it's a pragmatic security policy because it is now secure and cannot be invaded by any country because it has joined nato it is careful not taking over over actions that could be a security threat as russia finland made concessions to the soviet union one of which finno soviet treaty in 1948 the treaty ensured that finland would remain neutral so under this finno soviet treaty 1941 finland would remain neutral this was promised by neutral but now it has bowed would not allow any foreign troops on its soil without the permission of russia now it is one type of provocation on russia why because it is treaty is already signed in 1948 that finland would remain neutral and would not allow any foreign troops on its soil while this helped finland to boost trade with the soviet union it became heavily dependent on the moscow thereby taking the making vulnerable to vulnerable to economic and political overtures from the soviets after the second world war pacifist line emerged and began to morph into what would eventually become finland's foreign policy strategy named after named after Juhu Kusti Pasikimi, the president of Finland between 1946 and 47, 56, Pasikimi line was based on the idea of peaceful coexistence with the Soviet Union, with neutrality being cornerstone. It helped Finland navigate complex. It helped Finland navigate complex international relations after the turbulent time of Second World War. So Finland has gone through multiple turbulent times. That's why it, it worked. for its national security it has joined the uh, nato but at the same time as it has earlier it has signed the treaty that it will be new it will be a neutral power and it will never allow any foreign troops on its soil but now it has joined nato so it has to work according to nato it has lost its military independence or strategic independence why the security policy change finland response experience during the cold war shaped its approach to security policy following the collapse of soviet in 1991 it sought to be, uh, build closer ties with russia while also pursuing greater integration with the europe it has pursued greater integration with europe right after the 1991 because when the cold war ended that changed the whole geopolitical scenario it has made the world as unipolar Uh, before cold before the breakdown before, before the end of cold war that is the breakdown of ussr the world was bipolar there is two powers one is u one was ussr and second was ussr but after the 1991 we can say that it is there is single power dominant there is single power dominance 
that is the us hegemony us hegemony started after 1991 so obviously there is a greater tendency of greater integration with the euro situation also changes in 1948 although they have signed the treaty that is remain neutral because at that time there are two polar two um, the two forces when two force powerful forces are there you can maintain neutrality but the fact is that now at present one for one force is already abolished that is the ussr has already disintegrated so the world has become unipolar only there is a major superpower that is us so there is no you have to go towards the us and obviously as it is a part of the nato the various western uh, european country and uh, other european countries finland has joined the other european countries after that and there is greater integration between finland and integration with europe the country has been active participant in european security initiative such as common security defense policy that is csdp and the nordic defense Co uh, cooperation at the same time it has been able to maintain close economic ties with russia However, there are tensions between Finland and Russia as a result of the flux in domestic politics in both countries. There is a tension between yes, domestic politics of both countries that developed some disturbances between uh, the uh, Finland and Russia. For instance, Nikita Khrushchev was willing to negotiate with Finland and allow the increased trade and cultural exchange between two countries despite 1950s seeing finland side with two west and when soviet union called for a boycott in uh, of the 1956 summer olympics in australia so so increased it because the process uh, it has they were it was interested to the build good relationship between uh, between the between finland and russia in 1950s okay so thus although it has in australia soviet union has decided to boycott the olympics so this developments it says that based on leadership many times some leaders like nikita khrushchev they have tried to negotiate with finland but the fact is that now the world has become unipolar us is the biggest superpower so every country has to develop their ally with usa for economic and strategic interests Could there have been any alternative to joining NATO? For Finland, alternative to joining NATO could have been developed its own military capabilities. Right? To, if you want to develop your security, if you want to make your country safe, safe, then you have two options. Either you have to increase your capacity, your military capacity, or you have to join any any other uh, any other collective security organization. Right? Either you develop your own security to protect yourself or you join a collective security. So Finland has two options to pursue deeper level of cooperation with other European countries through arrangements like CSDP or CSDP or NORDEFCO. You can sign individual security pacts also with different countries. You can also say, uh, take some cooperation at bilateral level. Some cooperation at bilateral level. The continuation of Ukraine invasion, decline Russian might, and now confront security umbrella by NATO gives impression that Finland's security concerns are mostly assuaged. So the con con so the extent to which this new cooperation between Finland and NATO countries pan out will dictate Russia's action. But seems that Moscow under the leadership of Russian plot Vladimir Putin might be further escalated by increasing troop presence in the Russia, Russia Finnish border. So chance is that during the border areas the among russia maybe the putin will deploy more and more forces Next is El Nino and Monsoon. India has had four consecutive years of good monsoon overall from 2019 to 2014.
गुड मानसून इन दिस फोर इयर्स द कंट्री एज ए होल रिसीव्ड एवरेज एरिया ऑफ वेटेड रेनफॉल ऑफ 1268 मिलीमीटर एनुअली एंड 933 मिलीमीटर ऑन द फोर्थ मंथ ऑफ साउथ मानसून सो इट इज अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ मानसून इज एक्सपीरियंस इन द लास्ट फोर इयर्स ओके By contrast, the preceding year, five years from 2014 to 2018, registered an average rainfall of just uh, so of just 1,070 mm, where it has rainfall. It is uh, it has witness 1,260 mm. It is 1,070 mm, 72 mm during the uh, period of 2014 to 18, and 8.8.1.2.4 mm during the southwest monsoon so in the both dimension it has reduced so in last 3 years we have last 4 years we have seen very good monsoon and that led to heavy rainfall because monsoon because a huge amount of for our, because our whole economy is based on monsoon because it is agricultural economy where more than 48% people are directly or more than 70% are 48% people are directly associated with agriculture and Seventy uh, percent of people are indirectly associated with agriculture, so that so rainfall and around fifty percent of our area are a rain-fed area. So so that 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 means they are dependent on rain. So when rainfall does not occur properly, that affects the lifestyle of fifty percent of our area. That means the Uh, around 25 percent of the farmers they are getting affected if the if the purchasing power is getting affected if monsoon is not proper. The surplus precipitation more than the normal or historical long period of annual average for the monsoon season during the last four years has helped deliver higher agricultural growth. Related to previous period recorded poor rain out of the five years, so higher agricultural growth is witnessed. According to national accounts data, the farm sector has grown by average 4.3 percent per year during. So, at that time, 4.3 percent has grown from year during 1920, 1929, uh, 2019 and 2020, 2020 to 2023, as against 3.2 during the 2014 and 2000 to 2018. So, the agriculture growth has also increased because of good monsoon. The land and mountain. Land is the opposition of uh, El Nino. During the yes, during the El Nino year, the rainfall reduces. But the La Nina year, the rainfall increases. The bountiful rainfall during the 2022 has been significantly attributed to La Nina. What do you mean La Nina? It's an atmospheric, at atmospheric unit surface temperature variability phenomenon occurring over the equatorial Pacific because of worldwide weather disruptions. It is especially abnormal cooling in the central and eastern Pacific region. For example, Peru coast. This is India, and here there is cooling, so temperature reduces. So temperature reduces means pressure becomes high, and obviously low pressure is here. So air flows from the high pressure region to low pressure region. Air always flows from high pressure region to low pressure region. So in multiple, so a huge amount of air comes from the um, Peru coast or the Pacific Ocean. Obviously, he that comes with huge moisture and rainfall occurs. That is what we call as La Nina, right? The latest La Nina event was one of the largest ever, ranging from July to September, September to December to February, and it brought copious rains to India, just as two previous storm and La Ninas in two thousand eight, zero seven and eight, two thousand ten and ten and eleven, followed by modern S episode two thousand twelve and has turned. So La Nina that causes huge rainfall. It is a region which is called as La Nina. On the contrast, it is called as El Nino. El Nino when Peru coast when Peru coast temperature becomes high. When temperature becomes high, then pressure will reduce. When pressure will reduce, then air will flow to lower temperature to high from lower higher temperature to lower temperature. So monsoon becomes weak during the period of El Nino. But monsoon becomes strong during the period of La Nina.
the rain falls you can see the monsoon it has changed okay it has increased Next. Okay, then Enso cycle already pointed point is the current in the neutral state. Currently in the neutral state according to US National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, most written update. Enso neutral conditions are likely to persist for northern hemisphere early summer. In other words, at least June 2023. However, a transition to El Nino favored by July to, uh, July to September 2023. With these chances increasing through the fall of September and November. Australian Bureau of Meteorology has forecast 50% chances that El Nino may develop in later 2023. So, if El Nino develops, then obviously rainfall will reduce. Indian Meteorological Department is scheduled to issue fast long range forecast of rainfall for 2023 southwest monsoon in coming days. So, Meteorological Department that will issue a long range forecast of rainfall or it is planned. What are the implications? Most global models are seeing the transition from ENSO that is neutral to El Nino happening this year, but that will probably affect the monsoon only in the second half that is August September of the season. There is a question it will uh, will relate will will it translate to deficient rainfall after four in a row extension or even negative agriculture growth. It may happen, right? Because El Nino situation may lead to negative agriculture growth or reduced agriculture growth, it may obviously it may happen because moisture will because air will flow from India to Peru coast that is called as a drought years it has seen in the previous table drought years in various times when you generally El Nino times this, this is the El Nino times here is moderate and weak moderate then weak then weak then weak then moderate then moderate then weak then very strong monsoon moderate then very strong then very weak so it is cycle process anytime anything can happen and our growth is predominantly depends on the agriculture on the monsoon or rainfall The El Nino years that are not bad for agriculture year for best examples of 1983 or 1997. Although there was Agrino, still agriculture output has increased. Her margin, uh, uh, where these two strong El Nino years, their output fall only marginally. For marginally fall occurred, right? Agriculture GDP growth was similar positive 1951, or in those years 1994 or 95. All of them some moderate El Nino events. To some of 2023, to 2023 could well run of good rainfall since 2019. This statistical probability says that high weather or not uh, is an El Nino. Moreover, El Nino can also turn into be weak. So, if weak monsoon or monsoon El Nino occurs, that means 
if during the week monsoon time agricultural productivity will reduce or there are chances of droughts next is how the national party is defined national party recently ncp and trinamool congress they have lost the communist party of india they have lost the status of national party while the election commission recently recognized amani party as a national party the commission also revoked the state party status granted to rnd uttar pradesh brs andhra pradesh pdn manipur pmk puducherry rsp west bengal and mpc in mizoram they have state party status has also revoked the election commission said that ncp and trinamool congress will be recognized as state parties in nagaland and meghalaya respectively based on their performance in the recent concurrent assembly elections they also granted recognized political party state political party status to lok janashakti party ramvilas uh, ljp ramvilas paswan in nagaland boys of people party in meghalaya and other tripura motha in tripura The BJP Congress, CPIM, Bhojan Samaj Party, National People's Party, and Aam Aadmi Party are remaining national parties now. CPIM, CPI has lost the uh, CPI has lost uh, the national status, but CPIM is there. Bhojan Samaj Party, it is a national party. National People's Party, NPP, and Aam Aadmi Party, these are the national parties. The name suggests that national party would be one of the that is presents nationally as opposed by regional party, presents restricted to only one particular state or religion. It has presents nationally. National parties are usually in India's bigger parties such as Congress, BJP. However, some smaller parties can also become recognized national parties. A structural structure sometimes is associated with being national party. But this is not necessary to translate to have a lot of national potential clout. Some parties like this fight being dominant in the major state, for example, DMK in Tamil Nadu, BJD in Odisha, YSR, 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 CP in Andhra Pradesh, then RN in, in Bihar, TRS in Telangana, having a major say in the national affairs remain regional parties. So even if they have major share in the national affairs, still they remain regional parties. Okay. So how the national party is defined? We shall lay down technical criteria for the party to recognize the national party. A party may enjoy national party status from time to time. The way we come at time, national party or another type of national party that depends on time. It must have at least eight percent total valid votes. In the last assembly election or Lok Sabha election from the state, there should be at least eight percent of valid votes. Aam Aadmi Party in power with big majorities and a very large share in Delhi and Punjab and the Goa assembly was it has received six point six seven percent in of the vote. This means that going to Gujarat Himachal election towards two thousand two end of two thousand twenty two, the party already fulfilled the criteria of recognition as a state party in three states. It then required six percent of the vote in the assembly elections, either in Himachal or Gujarat. Okay, for the commission of national party, while Awadhi Party has got only one percent of vote in Himachal, almost thirteen percent vote in Gujarat, and more than double is required to register the state party there. So especially to get a state party in uh, in Himachal, it has to uh, 
it, it uh, yes that made it in four states so it has to be uh, double the required to the, the required votes in the state party are it must be doubled then draft sagarmala innovation and startup policy sagarmala minister of ports and shipping water which it should draft sagarmala innovation startup policy the start policy aims at nurturing startups and other entities to co-create the future india's growing maritime sector not such in startups or entities this entails intensive collaboration of the organizations to build a strong ecosystem facilitating innovation and startups in the country so this startups sagarmala project this will encourage the startups in the country the draft policy aims to nurture startups in the maritime maritime sector it in intensive collaboration with the to build a strong ecosystem facilitate innovation startups in the country to drive sustainable growth and generate large scale employment opportunities so that's why this innovation policy has come the design framework and distribution distribution responsibility distribution responsibilities benefits among various stakeholders this will not only limited to existing existing stakeholders but also included upcoming young entrepreneurs with innovative ideas the draft policy has identified several key areas for the startup to flourish including decarbonization optimizing process through data maritime education then multimodal transportation manufacturing alternate advanced materials maritime cyber security so these are the dimensions in which the, there there can be established some startups because government do not have to invest on huge amount of money in research and different type of equipment or it cannot develop easily the infrastructure that's why uh, there should be uh, there is a there is participation of private sector and that is promoted by the sagarmala innovation and startup startup policy then how it, this digital portal based selection startup ensuring transparent process right transparent process will be there for for selection of startups grants to create minimum viable product services commercial some property in the market entry of scaling up the creation of launch pads organizing virtual meetings and providing technical knowledge of support by 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 via video conferencing okay and our startup awards maritime sector so launch pad support for carrying facility regulating support for tender and sub contracting so different steps can be taken to promote the startups in case of sagarmala sagarmala means port led development so various startups are encouraged to invest okay the promotion service the promotion startup shall be through development of maritime innovation hubs who shall perform the following functions develop incubators accelerators with state of the art facilities to cover all aspect of the startup journey from idea to scale product develop centralized repository centralized repository containing all pertinent information to assist emerging entrepreneurs so they will develop repository repository that means information so information repository repository will be there that will help the investors to earn more because there will be various ideas there next is attract investment will eligible startup business in innovation maritime policy they will attract businesses by various capitalists so that they will come and invest entrepreneur development through know how sessions that is technical sessions and the various aspects of maritime industry launching innovation focus programs so various launching innovation focus programs 
right? In our some focus programs will help help creating development in the maritime sector or port sector because various equipments are being used by port led in the in the ports, right? So in those dimensions, government is promoting startups. Okay, collaborate with national and international stakeholders. So, various collaboration with international stakeholders like NGOs, for government, banks, to the, to the, in subject matter of experts, social entrepreneurs, business leaders, investors, with potential to create entry and scaling in India. So, that is, okay. Next, State Energy Efficiency Index. State Energy Efficiency Index, 2022 and 2023. The Union Minister of Power and in New and Renewable Energy recently released report of recently report of Energy Efficiency Index that is SCEI 2022. The index developed by Bureau of Energy and Efficiency. State Energy Efficiency Index it is developed by Bureau of Energy Efficiency in association alliance with Energy Efficient Economy and annual progress of states and union territories implementation. So with this, with this uh, information, State Energy Efficiency Index is released, right? In SEI 2020-2025 states, Andhra Pradesh, Kannada, Kerala, Rajasthan, and Telangana are front runner category as more than 60%. Four states, Assam, Haryana, Maharashtra, and Punjab are in achievers category that is 50 to 60 points. Kannada, Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Chandigarh are top performing states in their respective state goals. Kannada, Andhra, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Chandigarh. Telangana and Andhra Pradesh are some, in, uh, some improvement. India is committed to achieving NDC goals. That NDC goals means national, national determined commitment. That is, India will become carbon neutral by 2017. And India will, uh, India will become, uh, it will reduce half of its renewable energy by 2030. So India is trying to achieve its NDC goals by the by promoting such such type of indices like energy efficiency index. What is this BEE? That is Bureau of Energy Efficiency. It is under the provisions of Energy Conservation Act 2001. It is built on, under the Energy Provisions of Energy Conservation Act 2001. Okay. But the primary objective, objective, primary objective is reducing energy intensity or energy it will promote energy efficiency in India. Right. We coordinate with designed customers, design agencies, other organizations to recognize, identify identify, utilize existing resources and infrastructure. Okay. Next question we'll see. So now the question is answer writing. Illustrate the role of Indian cinema and contribution to India's software, uh, software and discuss the relevance in the context of Indian's cultural diversity and global aspirations. This is answer writing. Okay. Then role in increasing soft soft power. You can write it. What are the roles? It's a very simple question. Very very dimensional. Music, right? Costumes, music, singing, dancing, right? Story. Different dimensions it has projected and just write the keywords. Some some for example, some charismatic movie stars have they are uh, earning huge amount of resources also. They are fan versus outside the country. Okay. So that is the question. Next, what is with reference to energy efficiency? MCQ. 
with reference to Bureau of Energy Efficiency. It was established under the Provisions of Energy Conservation Act 2001. The mission of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency is, is to assist developing policies and strategies with a thrust on self-regulation and modern market principles. Developed policies, yes. So, thrust on self-regulation market principles, that is, Bureau. so both the statements are correct with respect to Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Next question is, in which of the following you can find in a Bureau of Energy Efficiency star level? Selling fans, electric meters, fluorescent lamp, all of these three options are right. Everywhere because we can we can ensure energy efficiency in all the cases. Pacific Kekonan doctrine was a foreign policy. Often mentioned in the news recently associated with which of the following country? It is Finland. Because Finland, right? It is related to the Finland foreign policy because Finland recently joined NATO. Initiative called Common Statute and Defense Policy, CSDP, recently seen the news related to which of the following organization? Culture Security Treaty Organization, European Union, NATO, Nordic Defense Corporation. That is Common Security and Defense Policy, CSDP. It is Session is in the news, it is NATO. Right. Next question. Most of the following statement. All the Nordic countries are member of NATO. All the Nordic countries are member of European Union. All the it is this is wrong. Uh, member of European Union, all the Nordic countries, uh, all the European Union countries, this is also wrong. So none of the above are the answer. Okay. So the lectures end here and like this video and share this video. And subscribe to Vani Case. Thank you.